Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. I hope you guys in the best of health. My name is Muhammad Amir Ashraf bin My Asin and my friend I'm Mama Azudin bin Azli from group SR2411A. Today we want to talk about leading. So today I'm going to present about function of communication. There are four functions of communication. The first one is control. The second one is motivation. The third one is emotion, expression, and the last one is information. The first function of communication is control. Formal and informal communication act to control individual behavior in organizations. The second function of communication is motivation. Communication clarify employees what is to do, how well they have done it, and what can be done to improve performance. Progress toward the goals and reward for desired behavior all stimulate motivation and require communication. The third function of communication is emotional expression. Social interaction in the form of work group communication provide a way for employees to express themselves. Communication is a fundamental mechanism by which members of group show their satisfaction and frustration. Lastly is information. Individual and work groups need information to make decisions or to do their work. Communication provides the information individual and group need to make decisions by transmitting data needed to identify and evaluate choices. Thus, communication helps them facilitate decision making. Let's move on to the communication process. Communication process is happen when sender send a message by talking, phoning, or emailing to the receiver. Then the receiver will translate the message and may give the feedback or may not. Sender is the person who wants to give information, idea, or concept to others. Message is the formalization of the ideas which the sender to convey. Channel selection is about selecting the right channel for transmit a message, such as talking, texting, and emailing. Encoding is the process of convert the message to more easy to understand. Receiver is the person who get the message from sender. Decoding is about receiver translate the sender symbols into meaningful thoughts. In communication process, we have feedback and noise barrier. Feedback is a response or reaction to the message. It may be receiver take the action or not to the message. Noise barrier is disturbance that become a barrier to the message through the several factors. Now, we go to the message receiving process. In this process, we involve to the listening, analyzing and checking understanding. To get the real message, we have to do all of this process. If one of the three process we don't have, we can't be a good receiver. In communication, we have distortion in the communication. It is about receiver lost a meaning of the message. It is happen when the sender using the wrong channel and hard to understand. The receiver will misunderstand the message. The first factors happen distortions in communication is message encoding. This happens when sender use their own knowledge and try to explain to the receiver. Receiver will hard to understand about what the sender want to tell because receiver don't have a knowledge about it. The second is the message. Distortions happen when the content of the message are not understand by receiver. The sender chose the wrong format to send a message. Sender use the symbol to convey the message's meaning, so receiver will not get it. The third is the channel. The sender choose a wrong channel. It's happen when sender need to explain and talk face to face, but sender choose to send a text. Maybe the content of the message will misunderstanding by the receiver. The second last is receiver. It is happen when receiver are lacks of knowledge and cannot analyze the message very well. It comes 
from the problem of the own recipient. Lastly is feedback loop. Feedback is the check on how successful we have been in transferring our message as originally intended. It determines whether or not understanding has been achieved. Hi guys, I also want to talk about barrier to effective communication. There are several barriers to effective communication. The first one is filtering. The second one is emotion. The third one is information overload. The fourth one is defensiveness. The fifth one is language. And the sixth and the last one is national culture. The first barrier to effective communication is filtering. The deliberate manipulation of information to make it appear more favorable to the receiver. Filtering does not let people have a complete information that they need to make important decisions. People do not get a complete picture of the situation which affects their ability to make critical decisions. Second one is emotion, disregarding rational and objective thinking processes and substitutioning emotional judgment when interpreting messages. Our emotion also affects our communication and can have a negative impact on it. Two people communicating with each other can also give rise to disconnect and lead to communication failure. The third one is information overload. Being confronted with a quantity of information that exceeds an individual's capacity to process it. This leads to an imbalance where the level of supply is much higher than your processing capacity. This state of imbalance is what you call information overload. The fourth one is defensiveness. When threatened, reacting in a way that reduces the ability to achieve mutual understanding. Emotional state which causes people to either partially or totally reject incoming messages and other stimuli which they perceive as being incorrect and contradictory to their point of view. The fifth one is language. The different meaning of and specialized way in which sender use word can cause receiver to misinterpret their messages. Not using the word that other person understand can make the communication ineffective and prevent message from being conveyed. The last barrier is national culture. Communication differences that arise from the different language and national culture. Body language and gesture are another element of the cultural barrier. It is impossible to communicate without body language and gesture. It provides meaning and justification for communication. Now, let's look out the types of communication. The first one is formal communication. Formal communication is about communication that follows the official chain of command or is part of the communication required one's job. They are typically conveyed from top leadership to the lower level employees. It is backed by organization procedure. The second one is informal communication. This communication using by us for social interactions. It is easy to understand and more effective channels of communication because it is using the simple language that we use for a daily interaction. That's all from us. I hope you enjoy and get something from this video. Thank you.